Testing, testing, is that coming through? No? I saw a couple heads up and a couple heads down. Testing, working, not okay? If it, shall I use the other mic? Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. All tech, uh, Murphy's Law with technology, right? Okay, so uh, I'm gonna, I've am gonna. i got a few slides I'm going to rattle through very quickly. In the famous words of Zig Ziglar, normally he talks about 300 words a minute. In some cases he goes up to 550, so in this case I'm going to talk about 550 for a few of these slides just to get through the information. I'm not going to spend a lot of time. If you want to come back later and ask questions about it, we can certainly entertain that. But uh, uh, angel, angel investing in the U.S. and around the globe has become very, a very significant source of capital. And as I said a moment ago, it's about 30 billion dollars of annual investments that we make just in this country. And because of that, the Kauffman Foundation, who is focused on building entrepreneurial businesses and building the entrepreneurial ecosystem, came up with the angel capital idea, angel capital associ association idea, starting in the early 2000s. We became an official organization in the 2003 time period, and today we've grown to more than 220 angel groups out of the plus 300 that are in the U.S., representing about 12,000 accredited investors. And of course, uh, a lot of the things that we're doing there are looking at best practices. How do we really make this, this asset class work for people? So there's a lot of best, best practices that we attempt to bring to the table on an ongoing basis to improve our processes and make our and increase our opportunities of a good return uh, when we make these types of investments. So here's some data, angel investors, on a, these are annual numbers, invest about $25 billion. Venture capital is, is invest about $30 billion. So you can see we're pretty equal to the amount of money going into VC deals. Private equity is the, is the 800 pound gorilla in the room, but they're primarily investing in companies that are proven companies. The owners perhaps are looking for an exit strategy and maybe they're looking for a roll-up strategy to make a $100 million company a billion-dollar company by virtue of large amounts of capital that they put to work in these organizations. Some more data, you can, you can uh, kind of sort through this uh, a little bit later, but 71,000 deals are represented by this $25 billion in capital that angels invest. 32,000 of those are in the seed stage or in, and almost 30,000 in the early stage. And this represents about 300,000 individuals making these types of, of investments on an annual basis. VCs, much smaller number of deals, put more money to work, about 20% more than the angels, but it's done in, in a much smaller number of uh, deals. Therefore, that means, obviously, that they're writing much larger checks when they come to the table to invest in these companies. And then you can see how it's broken down in terms of seed, early stage, and later stage, or expansion. You may not be able to see this too clearly uh, on this slide, but this is really an important reason why angel investing is so important in this country and around the globe. <coughs> if you look at this 25 year uh, history of data, it shows in the blue, we're showing number of new jobs created in this country, and we've included in that jobs created by companies that are zero to five years old. If you strip those numbers out and look at the red bars, you can see that we would have a net job decrease on that, in that 25 year period. So obviously the startup ecosystem is very important from a job creation standpoint in this country. That slide is off a little bit, that yellow bar should actually be up, but you can see when we started back in the 2000 time period, how the number of angel groups has grown over this uh, 12 or 13 year period. Uh, I touched on this just a moment ago, but 67% of angel groups invest somewhere between $150,000 and $500,000. In our group, it probably is approaching uh, $700,000 or $800,000 on an average deal basis today. We have a number of deals somewhere in the range of 15 plus companies that we've invested more than a million dollars in. And I'll share more of that information with you in just a moment. One other key point, uh, which you'll hear about throughout the day, but in order to make these deals work, and because of the, you know, the half a quarter of a million to half a million dollar number that most uh, angel groups put in, that means uh, by definition that we're looking to syndicate these deals on either a local basis or a regional basis to ensure that we've got enough money in the deal to let the entrepreneur hit the milestones 
or enable them to hit the milestones that they promised to hit. One of the key sins in this business is to underfund the company because of the, the uh, CEO will be spending most of their time trying to raise money. And that definition of CEO, which is typically chief executive officer, becomes the cash extraction officer. And they end up spending most of their time trying to raise money. And that's not where we want them to spend their time. We want them to spend their time in building successful, vi viable businesses. This just shows you the number of members and angel groups. Our group is in that 51 to 75 category. Where do angels invest? And you can see most of angel investing is done on a local basis. And I think that's the very nature of angel investing because it's not just about writing the check. It's about having passion to go work with these companies. Roll up your sleeves, go help these companies through the gauntlet of all the issues that they're going to face. And again, I'll touch on this uh, in more detail in just a moment. This is, how, this is how angels invest money. Price round simply means that it's an equity round. So we've taken a piece of equity into the company and we've set a, a pre-money number to say that this, this investment is worth X number of dollars when we write the initial check. When a lot of entrepreneurs come to you, they think they have a really pretty baby. They price that baby at, pick a number, five million bucks, $10 million. We look at it and say, yeah, it is a pretty baby, but it's not quite that pretty. And so we have a negotiation to, 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 no, to negotiate what that actual free money number is. And that's a very important economic term that you'll hear later today as we go through term sheets and how we price deals. We don't want to overprice them because we get them to a point that we can't fund them without a cram down later on. That's something that we're obviously trying to, to, uh, to uh, bypass. So uh, one, one, yes. Yeah, that, uh, that pre-money range would be for a very nascent type operation, which we don't do a lot of these days, could be as low as a half a million dollars. Typically what we're seeing are pre-money numbers in the range of perhaps a million up to two million to two and a half or three million. On a national basis, and we survey, survey these groups through the ACA, we're seeing at about two and a half million dollars. So in that number, for a pre-money number for the initial investment, and, and that number is weighted by both the coast, east coast and west coast, where the deals tend to be priced at a little higher number than what you see them priced at in the Midwest. Uh, and by the way, uh, uh, the, co the concept here is, our goal isn't to take control or ownership of the company. The goal is to have enough skin in the game for the entrepreneurs and the management team to incent them to really make a successful business. We want to have a meaningful role in the company from an ownership standpoint, but the goal is not to control the company. These are all the reasons uh, and the benefits of investing in an angel group. I gave you my one example. I've got many more of those I could share with you, uh, but uh, if we had more time, but lots of reasons why it's better from our, from our uh, belief to co-invest with others. And it's uh, really around this idea of aggregating all of these these attributes, investment dollars, knowledge, experience, industry connection, and to have more eyeballs looking at a deal from a due diligence standpoint. How you look at a deal is gonna be shaped around your skills and your past experience, which is gonna to be totally different than the way I look at it. And if you're a life science investor and I'm an IT investor and we've got an IT deal on the table, I'm probably gonna have a little more knowledge about that deal and, and, the, and the, the opposite happens, of course, if it's a life science deal, I can go to our life science investors to get that expertise to properly vet the deal. Just uh, one point on this, uh, and I'm gonna move on, but it's really, this, this type of activity is about wealth creation, not to preserve your wealth. Preserving wealth, there's lots of ways to invest your money at a much, uh, much less risky type, type of, of investment. So what we say to angel investors is pick the amount of capital that you want to invest in this asset class. And, and if you lost all your money, which is obviously not the goal, but if you lost all the money, it would not impact your lifestyle. So people pick whatever those numbers are that they're comfortable with. And one of the things that I'll talk about in a moment is the importance of a portfolio approach to investing that money. What we're looking for are high growth enterprises, not lifestyle companies. What that means is we're not gonna invest in the next pizza chain or 
or an auto repair chain or whatever. It's going to be those kinds of companies that have a real strategic component to them. And, it, and by definition, that probably means an IT type of company that's pretty broad or a life science type of company. It could be an advanced material, which you'll see in just a moment. Two questions we're really trying to answer. Is there real money to be made with this product? And is this the management team? Or do they have the semblance of being a management team that can lead us to the promised land? I, I referenced a few slides in here that came out of the book, Winning Angels. This, uh, when we first started, there were very few books that you could read on angel investing. Today, if you Google angel investing, you'll get a ton of ton of references. I highly encourage you to build your library of, uh, of these types of books and articles. But it walks through a seven or eight step process for how you vet a deal from initial deal flow all the way through negotiating the term sheet, papering the deal, uh, providing post-investment support for that company, and then helping the company through an exit at some point. This is a busy slide, but it really talks about the fact that that uh, angel investing is really a hands-on activity. I know in the last company that I ran, I had five VCs in the deal for about a five-year period. Two promises they made me when uh, we first did the deal. One is we'll write the check. I did receive the check and our checks. And secondly was we will help you in the development of your business. We'll open up our gold Rolodex. We'll bring you strategic relationships. If you need to hire key people, we'll bring you people that you can hire and the list goes on. They never fulfill that promise because they were busy either investing in new deals that they were vetting, managing the deals that they'd already invested in, and most of their, or probably half their time was really spent on raising the next fund. So those activities really consumed their, their, activity, their, their time, which meant that they basically looked back 90 days. They didn't help us look forward for a year or two strategically about where we're gonna take this business. Angels, in fact, do that. And that's one of the value adds that we bring to the table for the companies that we invest in. This is another uh, interesting uh, curve that uh, uh, came out of the Winning Angels book. And the key point on this is you read books, you do your first deal, you lose your money. That was considered <laughs> to be a positive point. And for those people who actually made money on their first deal, that was a negative. And, and the analogy that they used was when you think about going to Las Vegas for your very first time, you walk into a casino, you flop down a $100 chip, and you play blackjack, and you get 21. Thoughts? That's pretty easy, right? Easy money. And if you stick around long enough, you probably lost all that money and, er and all the money that you brought with you. And that was the analogy that they used to, to talk about the fact that uh, losing money can make you think in more detail about how you actually want to make these types of investments. 